In the headlines, APC to officially unveil Vice Presidential Candidate Shetima on Wednesday. Police rearrest suspected Kuji Prison SKP in Kaduna. WTO Director General Okonjo Iwela visits Nigeria, speaks on the importance of fishery subsidies, local vaccine production. And on the foreign scene, Afghan refugees protest delayed visas at U.S. Embassy in Madagascar. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Hello and welcome once again. The All Progressives Congress, APC, will unveil Senator Kashim Shetima, the running mate to his presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu, on Wednesday. This is coming five days after the ruling party postponed the unveiling with no reason given for the shift in date. Shetima was meant to have been presented to party members at the APC National Secretariat on July 14th, but an APC official told reporters the event had been moved forward. APC National Organizing Secretary Suleiman Arugungu said the official unveiling will take place on Wednesday, 20th July 2022 by 1 p.m. at Sheikh Musa Er Adwa Center in Abuja. Meanwhile, the new Nigeria People's Party NNPP on Monday officially unveiled Bishop Isaac Idahosa as the running mate to his presidential candidate, Senator Rabi Umusa Kwankwasu. The event, which took place at the International Conference Center in Abuja, had presidential candidate of the party, Rabi Umusa Kwankwasu, had prior to the unveiling stated that the choice of Idahosa as his running mate is based on the cleric's outstanding record and impeccable character. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of this gathering is to officially present to the good people of Nigeria the patriot that we have carefully chosen to join me on the presidential ticket of the NNPP as my running mate. Fellow compatriots, I present to you the next vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Bishop Isaac Idahosa, PhD. On behalf of myself and my entire family, I humbly accept the nomination as the vice presidential candidate of His Excellency Engineer Dr. Rabi Musa Kongweso under the umbrella of our great party, the NNPP. At this critical junction of our nation's history, our country deserves a fresh start, and Nigerians deserve a fresh new idea, a fresh deal that will stay away the country from division and hate, and Chief Adebayo Lawal was on Monday evening sworn in as the new Deputy Governor of Oyo State following the impeachment of the former Alhaji Rauf Olanio by the State House of Assembly. The swearing in ceremony held at the Executive Chambers of the Governor's Office Secretariat in Ibado was sequent to his confirmation by the Assembly after his nomination by Governor Shei Maikindi as replacement for Olanio. The State Chief Judge, Justice Munta Abimbola, administered the oaths of allegiance and office. I, Adibari Wadimiki Lawal, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I will be faithful, that I, will, I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic, Republic of Nigeria, Republic of Nigeria that, as Deputy Governor of Oyo State, that as Deputy Governor of Oyo State, I will discharge my duties, discharge my duties to the best of my ability. Of my faithfully, faithfully and in accordance, and in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic. And the Kaduna State Police say they have arrested an SKP of the recent Kuji prison attack. Statement by the Public Relations Officer Mohammed Jaligi said the suspect, 60-year-old Alicia Aibu from Kano State, was apprehended in Kaduna while on transit to Kano. The suspect on preliminary investigation revealed that he is part of the inmates who escaped during the recent attack on the Kuji Medium Security Correctional Center. 
The Commissioner of Police, Kaduna Command, Yekini Ayoku, ordered the necessary protocols be carried out before handing the suspect over to the Nigeria Correctional Service for proper placement. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has opened its case against the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abba Kiari. Kiari is standing trial on an eight-count charge bordering on conspiracy, obstruction and dealing in cocaine and other related offences before the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja. Maridia Umar has more. At the resumed trial on Monday, the NDLEA brought a commander of narcotics attached to its forensic unit, Patricia Afolabi, to testify as its first witness. The witness told the court that part of her job specification involves receiving and conducting forensic analysis on drug exhibits. Michael Mbanifo is a counsel to the second and third defendants. Uh, the fact is that evidence is evidence, irrespective of how it's presented. Every evidence is outstanding in the first instance. That's why it's referred to as evidence. The fact is that she's made presentations in regards to what she knows about what she tested, and we are to put her under the fire of cross-examination to test the veracity of her claims in order to support for uh, her claims uh, with an attempt to support in what the uh, prosecution counsel is pre alleging or presenting before the court. Meanwhile, Justice Emeka Nguite has fixed Wednesday, 20th July, to hear the fresh application for bail by the defendants alongside DCP Kiari. They include ACP Sunday Ubia, Inspector Simon Agiriba, Inspector John Nuhu, and ASP Bauer James. Martia Umar. Trust TV News, Abuja. Two secondary school students, Naima Husseini and her classmate, Raicha Samuel of Government Secondary School Ukuru in Ongwenduki of just South Local Government area of Plateau State, are warming the hearts of many across the nation. After they returned the sum of 250,000 naira, they found on the school premises. The students found the money during break time and decided to take it to their school teacher saying it was morally wrong for anyone to hide money or anything that is not theirs. Ado Musa completes the story. This is Government Secondary School, Bukuru, located in Angwanrohal, Kanan, of the South Local Government Area of the state, where the students found the money. One of the students, Naima Useini, who resides around First Bank, Bukuru, said when they found the money, it didn't come to her mind to spend it since it wasn't theirs. I saw our friends standing. Then I had to go and talk to them. As we were just standing and left, we now started to ride. My friend was looking at herself in the mirror, and she now, we now saw something in the leather. And she now asked me that what's inside. And I said, I don't know. That I should check. And I say you check. We were even saying that she said, I should check. I say you check. And I check. We now saw his money. Then we now decided to return it to one of our... On her part, writer Samuel attributed the ease of arriving at the decision to return the money to parental upbringing, adding that her parents have always questioned her against such acts. We saw our friends and we decided to go and meet them. We went out of the class. When we went out of the class, we were now gisting with our friends. After we finished gisting, we were standing beside a red car. So we saw, I saw something in a ladder. I decided to tell my friend, what, let's check what is inside the ladder. So when we checked inside, we saw money inside. Ezekiel Yarima, the teacher whom the student returned the money to, expresses happiness over the development, saying he was surprised to see the student returning such a huge amount of money and asked him to look for the honor. Two of my students, Naima and Righteous, found some money and brought it to me. And the amount is 250000 I was very much surprised at the kind of heart those children have that they found which amount of money and brought it to me. And so what I did was to look for the owner of the money. I first of all asked them where they found the money and they told me that it was beside the red car. So I quickly uh, went to look for the man with the red car and he happens to be a supervisor 
of NAPTEP examination. Who the teacher, who said he is proud of the students who have shown that they are God-fearing, also appreciated their strength and character and urged others to emulate. Ado Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. The Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals and the National Association of Aircraft Pilots and Engineers have threatened to shut down airports in solidarity with the striking Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU. This came as the National Union of Banks, Insurance and Financial Institutions employees says it will shut down all financial institutions to join the NLC in a solidarity strike over the lingering ASU strike. The Nigeria Labour Congress directed its members to embark on a nationwide protest on July 26th and 27th in solidarity with ASU. You're watching Trust TV News Update. And still to come on the news, coping with tomato price in Kaduna. Details of this and more after the break. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. Now a recap of our top stories. APC to officially unveil Vice Presidential Candidate Shetima on Wednesday. And WTO DG Okonje Iwela visits Nigeria, speaks on importance of fisheries subsidies, local vaccine production. And in other news, the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngoji Kwonjo Iwela on Monday visited the Ministry of Industries, Trade and Investment. During the visit, the Director General discussed the importance of trade relationships in Nigeria and Africa with a focus on fisheries subsidies and local vaccine production in the country. According to her, fisheries subsidy is key to Nigeria on vaccine production. The WTO boss is seeking more support from local manufacturers to guard against imports of vaccines and other pharmaceutical products. Beyond improving trade ties in Nigeria and Africa, Dr. Okonjo Iwela said the WTO is also looking at soaring inflation rates, adding that WTO is taking measures to ensure that all restrictions on food flow to member countries are addressed. Meanwhile, residents of Kaduna Metropolis are lamenting the increasing price of tomato in the market. While the tomato sellers attribute the increment in price to the unavailability of the produce and cost of transportation, farmers say excessive rain is affecting the yield of tomato. The report. Tomato is an essential cooking ingredient in many homes, though it is grown mainly in the north in large quantities. Recently, buyers have been experiencing persistent increase and the price of a basket of tomato. It still affects my business. Explain. It affects my business towards the amount that we are buying it. Eh? We use amount to go and buy the tomato. It will not be enough to use it and serve the people. And get profit. And get profit. We use the profit and buy tomato. Oh my God, the tomato is to be honest, 
the price so, is high. Although during Eid al the price was higher, but now it has dropped. The price is up, unlike the way we used to buy before. For sellers of tomato, the unavailability and the cost of transporting the product is responsible for the price increase. So the transport the water. Cost of transporting tomato is high. So the need are the gas. Price of basket uh, of tomato starts from 15,000 to 18,000 and Abu Bakr Yunusa is one of the farmers along Bashamoro close to River Kaduna. He says the present weather does not go well for tomato cultivation because of excessive rain. During the dry season, we harvest large quantities of tomato because the cold weather is good for the tomato. Now, we are in rainy season and the excessive rain doesn't go well for the plant. So we can harvest large quantities. Another factor farmers believe is contributing to the scarcity of the product is the presence of termite that are believed to affect the tomato plant. Termite affect the plant this season. According to the farmers, farm input and modern farming technology will help to improve the production of tomatoes. Therefore, calling on the government to come to their aid. President Muhammadu Buhari has unveiled the National, Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPCL, just as the new firm will expand its retail outlets to 1,500 units. Speaking on Tuesday at the State House, President Buhari said, is it expected that the new firm will become a dynamic global energy company of choice to deliver energy for today and always? President Muhammad Buhari said he recalled how he was privileged to lead the creation of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, on the 1st of July, 1977. And 44 years later, he was again privileged to sign the Petroleum Industry Act in 2021, heralding the long-awaited reform in the petroleum sector. Buhari said the provisions of the PIA 2021 and MPCL is now independent and will conduct itself under the best international business practice in transparency, governance and commercial viability. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dimitri Silva, lauded Buhari for the 2021 Petroleum Industry Act that lingered for 20 years. On his part, the group chief executive officer of the company, Mele Kiari, said the firm has created a robust expansion plan to increase its retail outlets from 547 units to 1,500 units within the next six months. And the Central Bank of Nigeria's Monetary Policy Committee began its two-day bi-monthly meeting on Monday. Now, this came as analysts at the Cordros Security predicted that the MPC will retain the lead lending rates in the market after its July meeting. The analysts disclosed this in a daily research that the MPC would keep rates unchanged despite external pressure. The CBN's 286th MPC meeting will end on Tuesday in Lagos. Analysts at Cordros said since the last MPC meeting in May, Global central banks have intensified their interest hiking rates cycles to contain the high inflationary pressures. And now, Alade Abiodun as Daily Trust Bureau Chief in Lagos, and he joins us for an update on the meeting. Good afternoon, Alade. Good afternoon. All right, so can you give us um, an update on the highlights of the meeting and what decision is likely coming out of the meeting? So far. Okay, the most highlight is that the the CBN or the FPC have decided to increase the, the interest rate to fourteen percent uh, from from thirty percent, which it was in May. Uh, don't forget that for over two years, the interest rate was set at zero point five. For the first time, it was increased to thirteen percent in May, and now uh, it has been increased to fourteen percent. And the different economy is something that I consider very uh, uh, um, resources that if, if inflation continues, that the CPI cannot promise 
that the rate uh, will not be increasing in this year, you know. And from, from CPN office, you know, I call an expert who told me that uh, who actually projected that before the end of the year, you might be around 15 to, to uh, you might be around 15 to 16 percent, you know, uh, interest rate before the end of this year. So I think uh, we can see the effect of the economy on us. Um, we can see the impact of us being the moon economy, where all that will depend on is the oil that we are not even refining. You know, we actually uh, uh, ensure that we don't even make any benefit from whatsoever resources that we think that we actually have. So I think we all know this to get right. The interest rates have been increased to 40%. It's the way that the CBI thinks that this is the best way they can fight inflation, but let's see how it's going to work. Let's see how it's going to work. All right, so generally, what are the expectations of stakeholders in financial sector considering the impact that these decisions might actually have on the Nigerian economy going forward? Yeah, going forward, this will actually impact the economy because to expect the bank, the deposit money bank as well, to also exist that, you know, people want to borrow, and, 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 and all this thing will lead to high to, uh, to price, and, uh, you know, where do we have? Uh, food, food inflation that is over 20 percent. So, uh, you know, I was listening uh, earlier today, I was listening to a baker who was complaining that, that the same part of sugar that, 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 that they bought for 6,000 ever, I guess, in 2015, it's 29,000 ever, you know, as of today. So, we should expect more. Uh, we should get ready that, except we're able to diversify the economy. So, but this does not look too bright for now. But we can believe that this is the way that they can actually fight inflation in the country. But I think, by and large, we can. Uh, stakeholders are, uh, are looking at what the CPN have done. Uh, and, 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 and I think uh, in, in, in the coming days, we all will be able to see the effect of this, you know, on our pocket. All right. So thank you and very on the much. Economy. Thank you very much for that update there, Alade. And Alade Abiodun there, the Daily Trust Bureau Chief for Lagos, giving us an update on the MPC meeting. Now, Aero Contractors on Monday announced the temporary suspension of its scheduled passenger service operations. The suspension is due to the impact of the challenging operating environment on the airline's daily operations and will take effect on Wednesday, according to a statement by the management. The airline regrets any inconvenience the move might cause. Airlines in the country have battled challenges in recent times as a result of the upsurge in the price of aviation fuel and other issues. Now for a look at the foreign scene where at least a dozen Afghans, including children, gathered on Monday outside the U.S. Embassy in Madagascar, saying they had applied for the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program in 2019, but were yet to receive any updates. They said a few months ago they had interviews with a U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services agent. They said they had worked in support of either NATO forces, U.S., foreign companies, or non-profit organizations in Afghanistan, and as a result faced Taliban retribution if they returned to their home country. And in sports, Nigeria's women's senior football team, the Super Falcons, were defeated by his Morocco in the semi-final clash at the ongoing Women's Africa Cup of Nations. The Falcons were reduced to nine ladies in the second half following two red cards for Halima to Aindi in on 48 minutes and Rashidat Ajibade after 71 minutes before going on to lose on penalties. An own goal by Yasmin Mrabet had broken the deadlock to put Nigeria 1-0 ahead of the Atlas Lionesses in Rabat, but the hosts equalized through Sana Masudi four minutes later. Both teams battled until the end of 90 minutes and played another 30 minutes of extra time with no more goals before settling for penalty shootouts. Nigeria lost the shootout 4-5. Morocco will now face Bayana Bayana of South Africa in the final of the competition, while Nigeria battles Zambia in the third place match. And in the English Premiership, Arsenal have agreed a £30 million deal with Manchester City to sign Alexander Zinchenko, 
which includes 2 million in add-ons. The midfielder, who has played many games at left-back for the Blues, is currently on a pre-season tour in the U.S. with the Premier League champions. The Ukraine international, who is 25, is expected to fly back to England in the coming days to complete the move. With this... And that wraps up Trust TV News Update for this hour. For more news, you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.